Hello everyone. So I had two questions this week that I wanted to answer in a uh, quick video. They actually work nicely together. So the first question that I had was how does ATP from damaged red blood cells or damaged erythrocytes lead to clotting or initiate the clotting cascade? Now the second question is, hello everyone, this is Andrew Wolf. In this video, I wanted to answer a couple of questions that I received. Uh, the first question is, how does ATP from damaged erythrocytes initiate the clotting cascade? And the second question is, how can inflammation without cell injury initiate the extrinsic pathway of the clotting cascade? Now, Interestingly enough, these questions are related, so I'm going to answer them in the same video, and they all sort of come together because they both involve tissue factor. Okay, so let's take a quick little journey to the inside of a blood vessel. And in this case, you know, we're going to imagine that this is a small arteriole and so we've got our endothelial cells and outside of a thin basement membrane we've got smooth muscle cells okay so on the inside of this vessel of course we have our red blood cells now interestingly enough when the red, red blood cells are flowing quickly through narrow vessels, so if we have high flow through uh, a low diameter, low radius, so that means what? High flow and high resistance means that it's high flow under pressure. So this is a situation that may occur during exercise or great stress. Now what happens in this situation is the erythrocytes aren't necessarily damaged but the cell membrane is getting dinged up a little bit because it's bumping up against the side of the vessels and when it gets dinged up a little bit it some of the ATP from inside the cell slips out and just a little bit not too much because the cells have not completely lysed. So a little bit of the ATP comes out and slips out. And on the surface of the smooth muscle cell, we have little receptors. And these receptors stimulate the smooth muscle cells to dilate. And this actually is a compensatory mechanism so that we don't damage our red blood cells too much. So when the smooth muscles dilate, we increase the diameter of the vessel and it decreases the shearing forces on the red blood cells. So this is an important compensatory mechanism in um, improving the flow through our vessels. Now, when red blood cells are damaged even more so this is this happens when there are is a small amount of ATP that's being released now these same P2X7 receptors also are found in neutrophils and monocytes inside the red blood cells in inside the bloodstream the exact same receptor. So this is a P2X7 receptor. And it's actually, you know, it would be simpler to think about it as an ATP receptor. So this only act causes activity when there is large numbers, uh, of large amounts of ATP that's released into the bloodstream. So on the neutrophils, we need a lot of these 
P2 X7 receptors to be activated in order to um, initiate a response. So this happens when red, red blood cells are lysed. Then we have lots and lots of ATP that's being released. And it's not that the red blood cells are synthesizing ATP just for this purpose, it's just that the ATP happens to be in the red blood cell along with everything else. So when the red blood cell lyses, ATP and all of its other contents get released. And the ATP just happens to hit um, a bunch of these P2X7 receptors, and when enough of them are activated, they initiate a response. And the response inside neutrophils and monocytes is to begin to express. So here we're going to make our receptor here. And when we get enough of them activated, it's going to send a second messenger system down into the cell. And the cell is these monocytes or neutrophils are going to begin to express a new protein on the surface. And this new protein on the surface is called tissue factor. Now this is not the only place that tissue factor can be expressed and um, in fact you know as I talked about before injured cells can express it and injured cells can actually excrete it so this is one way that tissue factor can be um, activated. So obviously this is one of the ways that tissue factor is activated when there is cellular injury. Now if we damage another cell in the body, up in the tissue, uh, let me say one of these smooth muscle cells got injured by some kind of chemical, same thing is going to happen. All cells in the body have ATP in them, so the ATP is going to release, be released. The monocytes and the neutrophils could care less where the ATP is coming from. They're just detecting a large amount of ATP. It's going to activate the P2X7 receptor and we're going to release tissue factor. Now this brings me to the second question that how can the clotting cascade be initiated when there is no cellular in injury? Well the monocytes and neutrophils can express tissue factor from a variety of stimuli. The other stimuli, another, another couple of examples would be stimuli from cytokines. And the ones that I'm aware of that will stimulate monocells and neutrophils to uh, start expressing tissue factor include IL-6 and tumor necrosis factor and I think there's a you know relatively long list. So immune system cells are going to excrete these things for a variety of reasons, including the presence of, of activated complement, um, histamine, and activated immunoglobulins. So immune globulin, immune globulin and antigen complexes. So any of these inflammatory pathways are going to initiate the secretion of cytokines. The cytokines are going to stimulate the monocytes and neutrophils to begin expressing tissue factor and then tissue factor is going to start the extrinsic pathway. So that is that explains the way that the extrinsic pathway can be initiated by inflammation without cellular injury. And this is an area of very active research right now because if we can figure this out then then it's possible we may be able to block in uh, inflammation that is causing um, hypercoagulation in diseases like coronary artery disease. I hope this answered your questions and please let me know if you have any more questions.